Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the regular full board of Alderman meeting for December 14th to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America. Which is Under God, liberty, and justice for all. Amen. Can we get a roll call? Alderman King. Alderman Stowe. Here. Alderman Adamowski. Here. Alderwoman Tar. Here. Alderman Cassetti. Here. Alderman Janetti. Here. Alderman Knott. Here. Alderman Spigarolo. Alderman Yaman. Alderman Rivers. Yeah. Alderman Mamone. Here. Alderman Short. Here. Alderman Blackwell. Alderman DeLibro. 12 Here. present, two absent. I declare a quorum. Uh, before we start the meeting, I'd like to add two items to the agenda. Um, one is uh, under old business, the issue of um, 22 Silver Hill Road. And the second one is under executive session, uh, potential lease of Opera House. Josh, I'm yes. sorry. Trish, did you get Frank DeLibro? Because he, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Josh, do you need a motion to add those to the agenda? Yes, please. I'll make a motion to add the two previously stated items to the agenda for tonight. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? All right, motion carries. Uh, so we'll pick those up later in the meeting. Um, we'll also pick up the uh, minutes from the previous meeting uh, next month. Uh, so public session, uh, for those of you that are uh, visiting for the first time, just a quick reminder. Um, Actually, before we get to public session, I want to thank everyone for uh, voting for me, um, except for Chicago, I'm sure uh, secretly abstained. But uh, no, thank you all for your confidence um, in me and your support. And it's been a fun, fun time. I love doing meetings from my basement. So <laughs> keep it up. And uh, thanks again. And uh, as a reminder, uh, the sub, uh, Board of Aldermen subcommittee uh, appointments and uh, assignments will be uh, available shortly. I'll be sending those out. Um, but for those aldermen, especially the new ones, uh, Bob and Steve, um, you know, if you have special skills um, that you know that you feel would would be uh, good on certain committees, uh, please let me know, and I'll try to uh, appropriately uh, assign you. Um, and uh, that's it. All right. So move on to public session. Uh, just quickly, a uh, reminder of the rules, please identify yourself for the public record, um, name and address. Uh, number two, uh, please uh, remember that this is not a Q&A. We'll do our best to address things, um, but we, we can't really go engaging back and forth um, you know, on, on some of these topics uh, on the spot. And three, please limit uh, any responses uh, in the public session to three minutes uh, or less. So with that being said, is anybody from the public who wish to speak uh, to the alderman tonight. All right, we have a hand up. Um, Rick Dunn. You're Thank up. you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, President of the board, members of the board of aldermen. My name is Rick Dunn. I live at 241 Silver Hill Road in the city of Derby. Uh, I'm here tonight in my capacity as a private citizen, and uh, I've been asked by a number of uh, our neighbors in both Derby and Ansonia to uh, address the board tonight and encourage you to affirm your previous action uh, with regard to uh, the public safety improvements on Silver Hill Road uh, in front of, I, I believe it's number 22 is the address. Um, really just, just wanted to make certain, I was disappointed that the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, did not approve the 824 referral. Uh, wanted to make certain that everyone understood that that's an advisory referral um, and that it, you're not bound by that action. I, I, on behalf of the neighbors though, uh, we're really scared about driving on this street. It's a very dangerous situation. You have a, a steep descending curve 
in that area. Many of us have been involved in accidents uh, on that bend and on other bends below it. Uh, mirrors clipped off. I mean, literally we're inches away from head-on collisions uh, on some days. So the ability to create a loading zone of some sort off the road within the public right-of-way, but off the lane of travel, so that vehicles like <laughs> Amazon delivery trucks, I, I swear they grow on the hill, but you come down around that blind corner and it's sitting right in the road because there's nowhere to go. Um, and it's, it's a very, very dangerous situation. Um, I think, I think it's, you know, it, this is the best move in the interest of public safety and the interest of uh, the traveling public. Um, but uh, I, I do, I just did want to raise one, one thing that has happened. There's a granite block that's been placed along the curb line of the road. It's very, very dangerous. Uh, it, you've created a more dangerous situation because there is no area of refuge. If a vehicle goes off the road, it's going to hit this multi-ton block of granite, um, which, which I would think would be a, a bad situation for the city in terms of liability. But I appreciate your time. I appreciate the opportunity to address the board and I encourage you to, to take the action to approve the safety improvements on Silver Hill. Thank you. Thank you for visiting. Uh, anyone else from the public who wishes to address the Board of Aldermen tonight? Hi. Uh, yes, Chris. My name is Christopher Mokarski, and I ask that you vote in favor of granting me once again a permanent <coughs> for a parking spot despite the negative finding of an 824 from PNZ. I have once again asked the neighborhood their feelings on this, and there's an overwhelming support for this endeavor. There is also a great deal of disgust and dismay that PNZ is so dysfunctional as not to approve this. They also concur that the turn in the road there is the most dangerous spot in the entire road and a parking spot will help make this area safer. I understand there are rumors I lied to get people to sign during the first petition. So I asked them all with a question in the petition and they all said no. No matter how, who says this, no matter how many times that's said, that's clearly not true whatsoever. They know I live alone with no handicapped person. I have filed the petition with the town clerk for you all with my first and only drawing of scope of work. Look and you will see that I mark where the neighbor's land is. I have never tried to lead anyone to believe this was only in front of my property. This current petition has 113 signatures from the immediate neighborhood. All the surrounding streets were the people who drive Silver Hill live. I did not meet again a lot of people due to this holiday season of shopping, dinners and vacations. I'm sure their neighbors will talk with them regarding this issue. As well, there are many concerned citizens that are not signed on this petition, such as commuters, the shoppers, those seeking to do business, or the great amount of relatives these people have who must make that dangerous turn to see their loved ones. I'm sure this will all come up in their holiday conversations as well. We all agree this turn is the most dangerous part here and a parking space will help. While widening the entire curve will be a real answer to this problem, this easement is at least a step in the right direction to making this a safer road. You have seen the good in this and voted unanimously for it before, and I'm asking that you do the same again. Thank you for visiting. Anyone else from the public who um, would like to address the Board of Aldermen tonight in public session? Hi, I'd like to speak um, about the issue on Kimberly Lane. Can you hear me? Yes, name and address for the public record, please. Uh, my name is Stella Jackarusso at 305 Kimberly Lane. Um, I was just, um, thank you that we were able to get this on the agenda. Um, my neighbors and I are grateful for that. Um, I, I was just following up on the PNZ meeting um, last month. Um, PNZ voted unanimously to accept the road. Um, Corporation Council, um, Mr. Marini, he had sent them a letter and um, advised to accept it. So I know it's on the agenda for tonight. I just wanted to see if any of the aldermen had any questions for me, if they'd been able to look over the information. Um, I believe we, you um, guys have all of the information that was sent to PNC as well. Um, so I believe everything is there and, um, you know, we're hopeful for a a, a vote to accept the road. And like I said, I just wanted to see if any of the aldermen had any questions, if they were able to see it, um, you know, before it's taken up. Thank you. I know th this, that issue is on the agenda under old business, as is the previous, um, the Silver Hill. Both of those are, are now on the agenda to be discussed later in the meeting. Uh, but if any, does anyone have any questions at, the, at this time? All right, thank you also for visiting. Uh, Anyone else from the public who wishes to speak tonight in front of the alderman?
Looking around for hands. Second call, anyone who wishes to speak in public session? And going once, going twice. Third and final call for public session. Seeing none, we'll close the public session and move on to public official session. Mayor Cassetti. President Sheward, members of the Board of Aldermen, residents of the great city of Ansonia. First, let us stand for a moment of silence for Ralph Villers, whose leadership and friendship should be an example for all of us in the city of Ansonia. He will be greatly missed. Thank you. It is wonderful to be with you here tonight, here at the last Board of Aldermen meeting for 2021. Let me begin by extending my congratulations to all our new aldermen. I look forward to working with you for the next two years. Together, we will continue to lead the fight to recharge our community. And if we're lucky, You'll even get to see the inside of the Board of Aldermen Chambers before your term ends. <laughs> Good luck and welcome aboard. Now on the subject of COVID, I wanna once again stress how important it is for our residents, young and old, to be fully vaccinated, to make things as easy as possible. We will be continuing our series of vaccination clinics with our tremendous partner, Griffin Health. Our next clinic date will be this Thursday night and Saturday morning at Mead School. We will have first shots. We will have second shots and boosters and even pediatric doses for kids five and above. How's that for a comprehensive menu? Let's pull together and finally get COVID behind us. Otherwise, I can't be held responsible for giving Sheila permission to lease out the Board of Aldermen Chambers as an IHOP. <laughs> and, I hope, and I hope that gets you hungry for more economic development news, because I can tell you tonight that the apartments at the ATP in Palmer building are preparing to go online early next year. In fact, the developers have informed me that 17 units have been spoken for as commercial space gets prepped on the lower floors. Plus, you have likely noticed that our new Riverwalk segment is nearing completion and looks fabulous. And I can't forget, with your approval later tonight, we will give a green light to proceed with the construction of the Senior Center at 65 Main Street putting us on track for a completion in late spring 2022. That's a lot of progress to look forward to. And I haven't even mentioned our ongoing splash pad project or our State Street overhaul. I do, however, need to mention next week's special unveiling ceremony with Griffin Health at the Ansoni Armory on the morning of Wednesday, December 22nd, 2021, as they give us the keys to the armory. I don't have to tell you how touched and grateful I am by Griffin Health's incredible, incredible, generous donation. The rehabilitation of the armory will mean so much for our community, especially for our youth. And believe it or not, I have no idea what the finished space looks like. I haven't been in there. So stay tuned to social media for our first official look at the new Ansonia Armory next week as we end the year on a great high note. Now, I want to address an area of grave concern to me, and I'm sure all of you. Like many Connecticut cities, we have experienced an uptick in criminal activity within the last year. And just last week, we experienced another incident, this time Shots fired around Fort Street, a heavily residential area. Fortunately, no one was injured, but I am not about to sit around and wait for the worst to happen. I fully 
understand that the Police Accountability Act, which is despicable in my, my say, has made our officers' job more difficult and damaged recruitment efforts across the board in this state. And I understand that criminals in Connecticut are getting the impression that they have free run of the streets based on the continued policies of this lagging state legislature. So it's time to adopt our new circumstances. The Connecticut Accountability Act may have tied our hands, but I can't close our eyes. That's why I have tasked my staff, including Chief Williams and Corporation Counsel Marini, to develop a plan or plans for the street surveillance program that will keep an electric eye on areas most vulnerable to crime. Through the use of modern technology, we will explore the use of digital recording devices and license plate tracking technology to significantly increase the odds of catching criminals in the act. And Sonia must never, never become a safe spot for those who commit crime. And with, the, with this board support, our city will become the last place a criminal will want to visit. You'll be hearing more on this project in the months to come. Now, let me end by wishing you all a very happy holiday season. Remember that you can still donate to our toy drive, collecting presents for Ansonia girls and boys in City Hall. A big thanks to Alderwoman Bobby Tarr for spearheading this effort. Now have a wonderful holiday, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. God bless you all, and God bless the city of Ansonia. Thank you, Mayor. All right, moving on to the public official session, we'll move to Corporation Council, John Marini. Thanks, Mr. President, and congratulations on your election. Thank you. And congratulations to all of uh, the new aldermen. Um, as the mayor just stated, we have an event coming up with Griffin. I'm very happy to see uh, the unveiling, uh, to see the rehabilitation of the historic Ansonia Armory. Um, we'd like to have, of course, the alderman present for the event. But of course, uh, per Griffin, um, there's, there's an importance to make sure that any gathering is with vaccinated individuals only. And obviously, you know, we're backing that up um, to stay on the safe side. Uh, we're urging that if there are any city officials who'd like to be in attendance, that you get your vaccinations ASAP, um, that you're fully vaccinated by the time of the event on the 22nd. And of course, you have plenty of opportunities to do that at Mead School Thursday or Saturday morning, whether it's um, your second shot, your booster, you're going to have an opportunity to do that. Um, but very, very exciting to see this unveiling. Um, additionally, tonight on executive session, you've added the Opera House. I'm happy to report the conversations uh, seem to be going in a very positive direction. Uh, for the new aldermen, um, this is an opportunity to engage in a long-term lease in favor of the city of the portions of 100 Main Street that constitute the classic historic Ansonia Opera House that has, of course, been dormant for decades and decades. Uh, the idea here is that the city may be able to bring some funding through grants for restoration of the opera house and in return we're looking to have essentially a, a leasehold on the property to be able to um, uh, to reinvigorate the downtown area um, so we'll talk more about that in executive session I want to let the board know that another round of contract negotiations is starting with our nature center rangers and you'll be hearing more about that in the months to come but our formal uh, negotiating uh, first negotiating session will be in uh, the first week of January. And finally, the mayor touched on a plan for video surveillance to help support our police officers um, and to help uh, detect crime uh, in a new innovative way. Um, City is looking at obtaining some quotes and going to uh, some, some firms for some consulting to figure out what a first phase of this project would look like. And of course, getting corresponding costs and options. So you could be sure that this is going to be a continued conversation uh, into early next year. Um, that's it for now. We have a, a bit to discuss uh, on the agenda in an executive session, but I'd be happy to entertain any questions at this time. 
Are there any questions for uh, Attorney Marini from the Alderman? All right, you get off easy. Move on to uh, Economic Development Director, Sheila O'Malley. Thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations to you and to the board. A um, few, a few items. Uh, 153 Main Street, where the new apartments are going in, the first phase, 25 new windows were put in. Um, a total of 90 will be placed, uh, and which will transform the building. You'll see a big, a big difference with that. Um, and then you're going to also see some out exterior work, canopies, and um, clearing <clears throat> for the entranceway of 153 main. So you're gonna see some um, visible changes. Most of, the, most of the work has been done inside um, and, and obviously not visible. So uh, hopefully you'll, you'll get a better sense of how that building's gonna look with the apartments in there. Um, and the tr they're working on a transformer with UI and hopefully power for the, um, for the new apartments on Monday. Um, met with Stel Ray, Larry Safran, who is putting an addition onto his building, a 7,000 square foot manufacturing addition, um, which will increase his capacity and also probably uh, increase the employee number. Um, so that's exciting, you know, and he's also working on another addition to, um, to be built on his property for retail for my eye doctor and another uh, space for retail. Um, working on three applications. I'm, I'm gonna start to get more and more vague on these applications because they are competitive and uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, just getting a little paranoid about it. We have two federal applications in and one state application, but most of the applications that we make I make on behalf of the city is for, um, as you know, SHW and Ansonia Copper and Brass. And SHW um, asbestos piping has been wrapped in preparation for, um, for demolition, which uh, will occur um, sometime next month, I am being told. Um, so I mentioned two federal grants and one state grant, and I, I believe that's it. Mayor talked about the river walk. Uh, hopefully in the springtime, everybody can en enjoy the amenities, um, the, the um, rest areas and the canopies are being installed and um, that should look beautiful. It's a really nice segment. And our um, study to continue the, the river walk is near completion. So I'll have, uh, we'll have a public meeting on that so we can lay out the maps and and show everybody where the next segment's going. I think that's it for now. I have other items, but they're on the agenda, yep. which I'll talk about later. Great. Uh, any questions uh, up to this point for economic development from the Alderman? Yes. Yes, uh, Alderman. Um, when can I get a tour of that, um, the building there where the apartments are going? Oh, whatever you'd like. Let me know, and we'll and we'll get you through. Okay. And the most important thing is, are we going to have an IHOP soon? <laughs> get reference. Second, second mention of that. Um, yes, that's the hope um, for the bottom floor of one of those buildings. But I know you, I know you not can supposed get to done. talk about it, but I you guys you can keep bringing it, it up. Yeah. I know you can get it done. Yeah. You can have some pancakes when you're on the tour. If not, you know, I'll bring my friend with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with me. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Any, anybody take a guess where where uh, Rivers went on his birthday? Hi, <laughs> <I> Hop. <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> I don't stock in the place. What do you mean? <laughs> Josh, what a way to short stack it on him. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh Tony. <laughs> you could always butter him up, I guess, right? Oh, <laughs> oh come on. Back on mute, I go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's mute yourself. It's going to be a forced mute in a second. <laughs> uh, any other questions for economic development from the alderman? 
like she said, there's a few items uh, that we'll be calling on uh, you for later in the agenda. All right. Yeah, uh, I don't want there to be a sticky situation. Oh, God. Uh, we're definitely moving on now to uh, Chief Wayne Williams and Sonia Police Department. And you are on mute. There we go. All right. Good evening again. Uh, to pile on, congratulations, uh, President, on your reelection, and to all the uh, the aldermen on uh, the new year. Um, just uh, an update on uh, staff wise: we're currently down six officers in our agency. We opened a new testing process this week, so we are currently accepting applications for certified and non-certified officer candidates. So, if anybody has anyone, you can give them. Uh, they can go to the city's website. They can go to policeapp.com. They can call my office. Um, we'll get them an application. We'll get them. Uh, we'll get them hooked up. So if you can, uh, if you can pass the word, that would be great. Um, we are looking for uh, candidates, especially city residents. Uh, the mayor touched on last week. We were dealing with incidents of firearms being discharged in the North End. Luckily, as he said, uh, nobody was injured. Um, we are still investigating both of the incidents. At this time, we have nothing to indicate that those actually were connected to each other. We have doubled our patrols in the North End since the first incident on Thursday on 4th Street. And uh, actually, it was one of our officers that called in the second incident on Friday night on the one-way section of 5th Street. The uh, doubled up patrols are continuing, uh, as well as adding some of additional patrols up there from our other sector cars. Um, also, you may have seen on the news over uh, the last two days, the incidents at the Ansonia High School uh, yesterday involving an online social media threat. Once reported, we were quickly able to get officers at the school and we assisted with both dismissing the school early and investigating the complaint. Uh, yesterday afternoon, we made one arrest of a juvenile at the school regarding that online uh, threat. Um, as a follow-up to that, uh, today, uh, last night and today, we have made two additional arrests of juveniles from the Ansonia High School for um, social media posts and or messages that have caused alarm at the school. We worked closely with the school and the superintendent's office to investigate these cases. Um, I just wanna make it clear that the police department and the school system take any social media posts or messages that threaten school violence to be serious. And we have taken a zero tolerance approach to these situations. I urge parents to have discussions with their children about the seriousness of these incidents so they understand the ramifications of their actions. Even joking around, it's not funny, especially in this day and age, uh, especially today on the nine year anniversary of Sandy Hook. Uh, at the last meeting, the alderman brought up uh, a light at the corner of Maine and Kingston that uh, hadn't been working. We worked with our vendor and that light has now been repaired. There are some additional repairs that are probably going to be needed there, but for now it's up and running. We are still working with the state DOT to put a new illuminated stop sign at the intersection of Pulaski and Prindle Avenue. We hope to have that installed shortly. Last month, um, next, lastly, next month, I'm gonna be putting up a contract in front of this board with Axon for the in-car camera systems. As I've mentioned in previous meetings, that is part of the police accountability bill that uh, we have to install cameras inside all of our cars. So we've been negotiating with Axon, but unfortunately because of the um, shipping problems, uh, they have been having problems getting some of the chips for these uh, camera systems. So um, I have the final, uh, I had the final presentation from them today and we have a contract that uh, we'll be bringing forward uh, in the next, uh, meeting next month. Um, once installed, that'll cover all our obligations regarding body cameras and uh, in-car cameras under the police accountability bill. Just for your awareness, uh, this uh, 1217, we'll be having our last stuff a Jeep food drive for the Christmas holiday. And then on 1218, uh, we'll be having our shop with a cop um, a yearly uh, event that we hold down at Target. And I believe that uh, there has been some uh, negotiation with the mayor that if he wears his uh, very bright Christmas outfit that a local business is going to contribute to our, our shop with a cop uh, program. So uh, with that, I will answer any questions that you may have. Are there any questions for the chief from the alderman? Hey, chief, it's Tony. I have a, just, I want to commend you and superintendent, you know, Joe DeBacco for your, for your swift action. You know, what happened at the school, as you said, it's not funny. It's not a joke. And it needs to be handled with the, you know, the, the, the strictest and firmest hand that we have. So I commend, you know, both of you for your actions on that. Um, 
Secondly, thank you again for addressing, uh, you know, the some of the complaints on Ford Street um, for, you know, modifying some of the uh, surveillance that you guys have been doing and some of the monitoring on the, you know, the, the runway over there. And then lastly, um, shop with a cop. Is there any details on that online or anything? So I, it's not online, but I can send them over to you. Uh, we we do okay. a you know, program once a year um, where we uh, work with Target. And what it is, is um, our school resource officer, Mike Berry, is actually the one who heads this up. And he works with all the schools to identify some families that uh, may be in need this Christmas holiday. And between officer donations, Target donations, and one or two other businesses that have donated, uh, we raise money to um, to take those families shopping at Target. And they actually have, they do a really nice job down there. Uh, the, the, the business uh, wraps the presents at the end for us. They provide hot chocolate, et cetera. So it's a, it's a really nice social event that we, we do every year with the, with the, uh, with the school system. Okay. I don't know if you could either post it on the Antonia PD website or the, the Facebook page or the city could even publish something. Cause that again, sounds like something I'd like to uh, partake in. So if you could send me some info, that'd be great. Ab absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions for the chief uh, from the alderman? Yes, uh, how you doing, uh, chief? Um, did you um, um, get any reports? Um, I think it was um, Sunday night over here. Um, there were uh, shots um, fired. Um, it sounded like it was uh, between um, Franklin and Wakeley, um, between um, Scotland and, uh, and Clarkson, I think it was. I was home and I heard the shots myself, and I, I thought that um, you, I thought that uh, people had already called you. Uh, they called me to tell me about it, um, but I was actually home and I heard it myself. So, yeah. So um, I'm not aware of any of those. I'll check with uh, Lieutenant Lynch and I'll check our operations uh, plan that we had that night. I don't. I'm not aware of any shots being fired up there. I am aware. Um, as I'm sure you living up there are aware that there are several vehicles up in uh, that area, especially coming out of Nolan Field, going up Wakeley Avenue. Oh, yeah. That yeah. have the, uh, the muffler systems that are mimicking um, machine gun fire and shot fires. Um, so we have been trying to address that. Uh, it had calmed down for a little while, but I'm not aware of any um, calls for service up there that uh, reported shots being fired. And usually that's a pretty condensed neighborhood. So we'll, if that happens, we get, the, we get the phone calls pretty quick. Okay. And then what normally happens is we respond up there with a bunch of officers and then uh, some of the neighbors will come outside and say, no, it's that and uh, they'll reference certain vehicles that uh, that may have been up in that area with their uh, with their mufflers. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I um, well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I heard shots. <laughs> if, if all I would ask is that when those come in, if you could call us, if you could yeah, tell sure. them to call us. I mean, I know they call you because uh, you're their alderman, but it, I I always try to encourage people to call the police when they hear somebody firing off uh, a firearm. Okay. I will do that. All right. Thank you, sir. No problem. Any other questions for the chief tonight from the alderman? Charlie. Yes, sir. Chief, I have, I have four questions for you regarding um, Ford Street. So what is the attraction to that place? It seems like there's been a, an ongoing criminal activity there before I was born and I'm 60 years old. So I don't, I don't, what is with this place, you know, that attracts what's going on there? Well, I, I'm assuming you're, I thought you said Ford, but I'm assuming you're saying fourth street. Fourth. Yeah. Fourth. Um, it, I wish I had the answer for you. Um, it is a very condensed neighborhood. Um, we know we have a lot of people that hang out in the park. We have people that uh, will hang around at that store. We have addressed trying to push cars away from that intersection um, and to get the park cleaned up. We've worked with the alderman over the summer to try and get that uh, cleaned up. And there are, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to give up too much of what we're working on up there, but there are occasionally. Um, I guess I oh, there are occasionally groups that will move into that area 
for um, established residences in that area. And I think you've seen in some of our press releases recently, some uh, execution of a search warrant that took place right at that intersection where um, the shots were fired on Thursday night. So we, uh, we are trying to address those uh, incidents on a case by case basis. But we've been working, uh, as the mayor mentioned, and uh, Attorney Marini, we worked with them over the week to see if there's a little bit more we can do with setting up um, camera systems. Um, we increase our presence up there, but even with our increased presence up there on Friday, Friday evening, you saw that uh, there was another shots fired call uh, one street away from where the officer actually was located. Well, it seems like they just, you know, for, for, cause I don't know what's claimed to know what's going on there. I just know that it seems like there's arrests and shootings in that area. And, you know, they, these people. I got a water bottle. Are you looking for that? What's that? Yeah. Well, that, nah, that's somebody's, uh, on yeah, that was, yeah, that was, uh, a tone, uh, uh, John. Okay. So I mean, you know, it just seems like they, they keep coming back. There's no, no, they replenish the ranks. You go up there and try to get them out of there and then they fill in the void again. Is that accurate? That, or is it the same, or is it the same people? Well, um, I will tell you that both of those are probably the same. Uh, we have locked individuals up and that's just not on the North end. We had this issue in other areas of town where we lock individuals up. Uh, the problem calms down for a little while. Some other people try to come into the area. Um, a lot of it is usually drug related. And then when people get out of prison, they come up there, want to take back their territory. And it's an ongoing battle that well, we have with them. Well, that's what I'm asking. I mean, I, I care about the other wards, but I mean, at this point, it seems to be so bad uh, on 4th Street there that I, you know, I need to, I'm, I'm an alderman for that area and I need to focus my attention to try to see if we can work something out together. Um, the other thing, I, can, I, can, was, alderman. I got, an, I got two more, I got three more questions. I'd really like to have answered. I, I'm Go sorry ahead. if I take up some time. So is it an option for Mr. Maybe Mr. Marine could put some in, input on this also. Is it possible to start working on a report um, where the police department, the mayor's office, the alderman, you know, any other law enforcement that can be involved can um, start working on a report of uh, options for things for us to do, um, you know, to, to move for ahead with this? Because we can't just stay where we are now stationary. I mean, I mean, we're literally half a mile from the mayor's office and we're having shots, at, you know, and the police station, the brand new police station is not even probably a quarter of a mile. And it's right, you know, right in, in our wheelhouse. You know, I, I'd like to see some type of a, um, a report done so that we can feel all of us like we have a, a plan to move forward you know, with the cameras and, and anything else that we can uh, provide assets to up there. Um, I, I think it might be more helpful to get a report because then, you know, we can learn by our mistakes and continue to improve, improve on the report and possibly use some similar methods in other areas of the town. So that's, that's a question. So I, th I think you mentioned Alderman Stowe report. And what we plan to do is help supplement the ongoing work of the police. And, and the police certainly are doing their investigatory work. Um, that information is necessarily confidential. Um, but what, you know, what can be done to make their job easier in light of the restrictions that they face with the new Accountability Act um, and just a more difficult time overall uh, in, in law enforcement these days? And we came to the conclusion that surveillance could be a worthwhile investment for the city of Ansonia. It certainly is for larger cities, Waterbury, Bridgeport. You know, they, they have efforts to, um, to, uh, to, to install networks of surveillance on public streets. Um, that helps with crime detection. It helps with crime deterrence. And when you think about Ansonia, we're a small city. We're a much smaller area. 
compared to a Bridgeport or a Waterbury. So you know that an effort is going to have a, a much higher return on investment here in Ansonia than it is in a place like Bridgeport or Waterbury. Um, so of course, the first step is, you're exactly right, a report, it's a study, it's trying to figure out you know, where our resources are best, uh, are, are best put. Um, you know, if we're going to fund this effort, you know, what's a way to do it with maximum results? And so we're, we, that's exactly what we're doing. We're, we're looking at the uh, security uh, surveillance experts, looking at those firms to help us craft an analysis, get some options, you know, what would make sense as a first phase for this effort. And it's not just looking at things like cameras, it's also looking at things like plate readers, um, ways to be able to be monitoring these public areas and extracting information from public areas um, that will again help uh, detect uh, detect crime, and also deter it. You know, we want to, uh, to to let individuals know who would come into the city to commit crime um, that they're doing it in a way that will be noticed, um, that their information will be captured, um, and that we're not going to allow uh, Ansonia to just be a safe space for doing things like um, like happened last week, right? especially areas that are highly residential next to parks, they should know that we're watching. Um, and we want to do it in a smart way. We want to do it in a way that um, where we're getting the maximum, um, the maximum return on our investment. So we're going to be going to some firms and uh, looking for a consultancy report to let us know, you know what our options are. And, and this board is going to play a part in taking a look at those options and moving forward. So are we gonna are we gonna be able to monitor this monthly or or eat less than that? Whatever. I'll whatever have an update for you in January. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make a commitment with with our, our team, us, our team, that we're gonna try to put some th thoughts and ideas on on this, and we're gonna uh, work together as a team, and hopefully we'll have every every month we'll have. A, you know, some good output. Is that our goal? Exactly. Exactly. It's the, the goal is results. The goal is to uh, move forward in a way where we're going to have results. Um, we know surveillance statistics show can decrease crime um, about on an average of 50%. Um, it's, it's having the cameras there to be able to apprehend uh, the, the, the people committing the crimes and also to deter the crimes, you know, you're, you're going to be much less likely to try to get away with something like that if you know you're under surveillance. So it's in a way a common sense solution, but one that modern technology gives us more options these days to implement. And we want to be embracing that technology. Um, you're talking about public spaces, public streets where this is happening. There's no reason that we can't avail ourselves of modern technology to keep Ansonia residents safe. And when you take a look at um, the cost effectiveness of that versus other methods, uh, we think that it, it would be of, uh, you know, foolish to not be giving this a, a hard look. And so, again, we want to do it in a professional way. So we want to go right to the surveillance experts and get some options for this board of aldermen on next steps. And of course, Thanks. we're going to be looking at funding options as well. But certainly any, any uh, expenditure that keeps residents safe, um, that's going to be worthwhile. All right, I th thank you, and uh, I don't know where the mayor is, but th I give him thanks also. I know he's, he's very concerned about this, like I am. Thank you. Very much, Charlie, very much. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, any other questions for the chief from the alderman? Chief, uh, on a lighter note, uh, Alderman Rivers was a little too shy to ask this, but he wanted, he knows that there was that uh, pancake on the loose and you guys were trying to hunt him down. And he wanted to know if you can be arrested for unwaffle activity. <laughs> I am not even going to touch on that. Thank right. you, Chief, for not touching it. <laughs> I rescind my nomination. All right. All right let's flip over to uh, Superintendent uh, Joe DeBacco. All right. <laughs> Uh, thank you, everyone. And first, like everybody else, I'd like to congratulate all those elected officials and uh, you, uh, President Schuert, um, aldermen and older women. Um, I also would like to give a big thank you to the mayor and everyone that's on this call for their support 
while I was out. I was out for about five months and it was because of the support and the caring of the community that we live in here in Ansonia that has helped me and wanted me, I, I couldn't be more proud and happier to come back to the great city of Ansonia. So I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, everyone that's on this, uh, on this Zoom call. Uh, yes, we did have an unfortunate event. Um, I can't uh, stress enough the class, Wayne Williams, uh, Chief Williams and our SRO, uh, Mike Berry, with collaboration between our Ansonia you know, administration it shows what true collaboration can do. It also shows that our safety and security plans are in place and that when they need to be executed, they can be. Um, it is unfortunate, um, but like Wayne said, um, we agree totally. Anything that jeopardizes the safety and security of our students or our community will not be tolerated. And uh, I, I said that, I'm glad I was able to add my two cents onto the police report that was put out. It's, um, it's something we take very serious. Um, and I actually hold the safety and security of our students, you know, very dear. And I also agree with Wayne when he said that it, this is a community effort. I actually penned a letter today to uh, parents and families to really take a look at their child's social media presence and their social media, you know, uh, footprint. Um, I think um, some families and parents would be surprised to see all the niceties that are shared uh, between them and their friends. So um, I, um, I have a letter, it's ready to go out, but I was told I should send some resources as well when I sent my letter out. Resources for parents could help, uh, you know, use it as a jump start to talk to their child um, when it comes to their, their obligation as a digital uh, citizen and what they, should, what they should and should not be um, presenting online. And I think um, people don't know of the permanency of what they write. They also think they're in closed rooms and that it doesn't go anywhere. But um, I, I think we have to do a better job of helping ourselves and helping our community and actually just being nicer to people, but also it's just an unbelievably unfortunate event. But on a more positive note, tonight at Mead, there is a vaccination clinic. And yes, there will be another one on Thursday and on Saturday, like, um, like the mayor stated. Um, I think we have some more positive things to come. I'm very excited to put 2021 in the rearview mirror myself. Um, I look forward to 2022. Uh, I do want to wish everyone here a happy holiday and, and a wonderful new year because I do think it's going to be uh, bring some bigger and better things. And I wish, just like I feel like Sheila O'Malley, how she can't tell you everything, but I do feel as if in the middle to the end of January. Uh, hopefully we'll have some big announcements, you know, going on as well in our school system. Can't really say exactly what it is, but I, I, I feel like something good is going to happen toward the middle end of January. So once again, I, I, I feel like the Sheila O'Malley who can't say everything, but I got to tell you guys enough. But um, once again, I can't thank you enough for your support and I'm here to answer any questions, but I do want to say I couldn't be happier that we have SROs in our building. Uh, we have Mike Berry. I couldn't be happier with the collaboration we have with our police department. And I can't tell you how classy, and, and I, I've been part of building evacuations before and, and it's unfortunate, but it went as smooth as it, as it could go. It has, there's a systematic way. So it does take a while, but guess what? Every kid gets home, parents get to hug their child one more time. And you know what? That's what our job is to do. But, and I, I can't thank uh, the collaboration enough. Once again, I'm here to answer any questions. Joe. Um, yes. First of all, I want to thank you for all that you do. And um, everything uh, ran smoothly um, under your leadership while you were away. And it's good to see you at the games again. You're not seeing you at the games. <laughs> and just keep on doing the good work, Joe. It's good to have you back. Thank you very much, Alderman Rivers. Very nice. Any other questions for uh, Mr. DeBacco tonight, Dr. DeBacco, from the Alderman? All right. Well, welcome back, and thank you, thank you, and also uh, Chief Williams uh, again for your efforts on that. And we look forward to your exciting news. <laughs> All right. Uh, next month. Sounds good. All right. So there ends uh, public official session. We'll move on to uh, committee reports. Uh, the Finance Committee. Hey, hey, Josh, I, uh, oops, sorry. Pay all bills. Pay all bills if found to be correct. 
I'll second that. Um, motion by Stowe, second by Mamone. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed or abstain abstaining? All right, motion carries unanimously. Um, other committee reports from the aldermen? Anything this month um, from subcommittees? Uh, anything that any of the aldermen want to report? All right, it's my kind of my kind of update. I will move on to uh, municipal reports. We have the uh, boat recommendations uh, from the uh, Board of Apportionment and Taxation meeting of 12-6-2021. Don't all speak at once. Um, Do we have a motion think... to accept that report? Um, yeah, I make a motion to accept the report. Second. Motion by Rivers, second by Stowe. Uh, any comments, questions? All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Abstain? Motion Josh, carried. can I abstain? I, I didn't get a chance to review it, so can I just abstain from that? Sorry. One, well, no opposed, one abstention. Mamone, um, motion oh, carries. Uh, land use report um, for the month of December was in your packet. Motion to accept. So moved. Motion to accept by Mamone. Second. Second by Rivers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? All right, motion carries unanimously. Just want to note again, as usual, um, the revenue um, for the month of 2021 from uh, the building department was $47,282.08. Make a motion. No, I just was, uh, there's nothing to motion there. I was just, I was just <laughs> noting it, noting for the record. Don't jam us up, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading. Oh. I was reading at the same time. I was Killing us. But now these guys are working in cahoots together. They're they're trading trading jabs here. All right. Um, let's see. We're motion to let's see the land use report. Uh, next up, uh, tax collector report and request for refunds in the amount of two thousand four hundred and fifty six dollars and five cents. Uh, if found to be correct. Make a motion to accept the refund report in the amount of 2456.05. Second. Second. Motion by Mamone, second by Rivers. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed or abstaining? All right, motion carries unanimously. Um, Do you need a motion for the tax collector report as well? Because I'll make a motion to accept that as well. Uh, yes, please. I'll make a motion to accept the tax collector report. Second. Motion by Mamone, second by Tar to accept the tax collector's report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Tony. Um, accidents and claims, we had two 12-21-1021 um, <clears throat> Hoyser uh, Franklin Jr. versus City of Ansonia and 12-21-1022 Benchmark Municipal Tax Services LTD versus City of Ansonia. Motion to send to Corporate Council. Second. Motion to send to Corporation Council by Tar, second by Mamone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? All right. Thank you. We'll pass those on. Uh, we have no communications this month. Uh, we have three, we got three resignation letters. They are all included in your uh, packet. Um, the first one was from Daniel Bosks re uh, resigning from the Inland Wetlands Commission. Make a motion to accept his resignation and send him a letter of thanks for his uh, service to the commission. Second. Motion by Mamone and second by Tar. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstained? All right. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Mr. Bosk, for your uh, service. Um, second resignation was Lois Ann Marazzi uh, resigning from the Ansonia Historical Commission. A motion to accept that resignation as well and send her a letter of thanks for her service on the commission. Second. All right. Motion again by Mamone and second again by Tar. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. And the third resignation is uh, Renee Simpson uh, <clears throat> resigning from the Ansonia Cultural Commission. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept her resignation as well and send her a letter of thanks for her uh, service to the commission as well. We'll second that again. All right. So once again, motion by Mamone, second by Tar. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstaining? All right. Thank you all. Thanks to all three of them for uh, their service on those committees. Uh, we have two resolutions. Um, number one is certified resolution number one, remediation and demolition of SHW. Um, I have the document here. That is, the that's the resolution uh, in the amount of $1 million to undertake the remediation and demolition of SHW. Wait, what? Uh, Sheila, you want to explain how these work? Yeah, these are um, <coughs> standard uh, resolutions that we have to, we have to get approved by this board. Um, it, it simply allows the mayor to enter into a financial assistance agreement and accept the grant awards. We received two grants for SHW, one for 800,000 for remediation and one for 200,000 uh, assessment dollars for a total of a million dollars. This just authorizes the, the city of Ansonia to accept the million dollars. Any other questions on, on that? The grant funds, there's no match. Yeah. We're just authorizing them to, to be able to, to receive. Fine. Yep. One's 2 million and one's a million. Is that correct? Well, the resolution one, one, resolution one is 1 million. Okay. Resolution, that's what I was confused. Yeah, resolution Gosh, two, is 2 million. That's a different one. Yep. It's worth noting that they are inappropriately tagged within the agenda that was sent out. Yeah. that's Resolution two are. is actually attached as resolution one. Right. And resolution one, and, and as the inverse is tagged as resolution two, that's why there's a little little confusion here. Right. So, um, I for see res resolution number one is uh, two million, right? Right. Right. And All right. So you know what? By the file name, by the All file right, so name, but what's written in as resolution number one and stamped in is specific for the million dollars just called out. Right. And that's yes, for the SH. Resolution one is remediation demolition of SHW, $1 million, correct? Yes. And resolution two is renovation no. extrusion mill ACB, $2 million, correct? That's correct. Yes. So, right. Sheila, before I make this motion, I just want to thank you for all your efforts on this. I know this has been a, a giant <laughs> eyesore for Ansonia and, and appreciate all of your efforts on chasing every nickel and dime you can to make it go away as quickly as possible for every resident in this city. I, I can't stand driving by and every little bit that gets knocked down is, is um, I take blessing. some some pride and pleasure in it and it's a giant blessing. So with that, I will make a motion to accept resolution number one. I'll Josh, can, oh. what's gonna, Josh can I ask through you, can I ask a question of Sheila? Can we, can we get a second on this first and then we can- yeah, Sorry. Second. So motion by Mamone, second by um, Sorry. Okay, go ahead, uh, Alderman Adam uh, Sheila, for, for those of us that uh, may not have had the, the background on this, can you describe the scope of the work of each grant? Yeah, the, um, <clears throat> the assessment grant was for um, a phase two and some subsurface testing and uh, an asbestos survey. The, the remediation money is for demolition and also for removal of tanks and any contaminants, uh, contaminated material on the property. For, uh, you know, so 800,000 was for remediation and demolition. And 200,000 is for, um, was for additional testing that needed to be done. And uh, can you describe a timeline going forward uh, on the demolition grant? Yeah, that's a fair question. Um, we hope to have another section of the property down in January. So we'll be working on a building, I believe it's building 12 
in January. There, and next time I'll bring a map so you guys can see uh, what buildings will be uh, teardowns and what could potentially be salvaged on that site. Um, but yeah, in January, you'll see some demolition and we'll just keep going until all the buildings that can be demolished are gonna be taken down. So hopefully within a six month period, you'll have, you'll have three and a half acres cleared. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so on resolution one, we have a, a motion and a second. Any other questions or comments? All right, so all in favor of uh, approving this? Aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Extensions. All right. Thank Motion you. passes. We'll move on to number uh, two. Um, that's the $2 million for renovation of the extrusion mill at ACB in Sony Copper and Brass. Do we have a motion to accept that one? I will make that motion. I'll second. Motion I'll second. Phone, second by Janetti. Any <laughs> questions on this one? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? All right, motion passes. Again, thank, thank you. you for your work on that and thank you guys for uh, approving that. Thanks. Onward and upward. All right, we move on to uh, appointments. Um, you, ha you have, uh, it says on the agenda, see mayor's letter, you received, I believe it was yesterday, December 13th was an amended appointment letter. Um, so that's, the, that's what we'll be going off of. Um, so let me pull that out and we'll take these by category. Um, dear board of aldermen pursuant to my powers under the city charter and code, I hereby submit the following appointments. Um, the first one is, uh, VEMS two year terms, uh, two nominees. Uh, first one, uh, Michael Rahala, um, Two Evening Star Drive, Seymour, Connecticut, uh, term expiring 12-10-23. Um, I just have a, um, um, a question about that. I, I, I thought that them, uh, them terms of um, um, October to October, I, I mean, I don't exactly know how that um, works. I think Kurt's on the line, but VEMS is... Um... You can you can appoint the mayor can appoint at any time during the term can um, appoint members from the from the city and uh, he wanted Mike Warhola as the chief and John Marini as the uh, mayor's office. Okay, no, I I, I was just um, curious about that. I mean, yeah, time I have frame. to I have to um, abstain anyway uh, because I am on the uh, commission so. And just to, this is uh, this is Kurt, just follow up on what Sheila said. Um, as a former BEMS board member myself, uh, the, the term is October to October. Um, but again, that's for the VEMS board itself. Um, you know, officers, uh, board members come and go based on changes uh, from the host cities. Um, you know, the mayor, uh, mayor's first selectmen each have. Uh, a designee that they put on and then each of the services uh, also has a designee that they put on. So that's where the two members come from. Um, so that's that's kind of the reasoning behind it. Okay. So should this be an October expiration on the term? Uh, I think if you have an established board, um, so, you know, for let's say for next year, I think doing it October to October would uh, makes sense. Uh, I don't think you'd want to hinder a, a new mayor or a new board of aldermen uh, to be locked in to something that was chosen a month before an election. So, uh, yeah. you know, that, I think that's a decision uh, that you guys would need to, to make, but I think you would want to give, you know, any new mayor, any new board of aldermen, the opportunity to make uh, changes as they see fit. Recording in progress. Thank you for your uh, updates on that. So we, we have, uh, a nominee, um, Mike Warhol, Michael Warhol, he's the current uh, arms chief. Um, do we have a, a nomination? So I'm a little unclear here. So are we do, or is it within our power to override that October to October kind of time frame? You know, if we so wish, or is that something that's just not 
allowed. I, I think what what um, Kurt was saying was that VEMS, which is a regional uh, entity, operates on an October to October schedule, but the mayor can do whatever can 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 designate his person at any point. It could be December. It could be also an, another point during the year. I would add that you know the mayor the typically you want the chief of your um, emergency medical services. Well, I'm not disputing that. I'm not yeah. disputing that. I think so, I think Mike and so would be a great fit. Yeah, it's that's just changed. That, so it, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not disputing that at all. I'm disputing okay. the time frame. You know, if it's supposed to be in October to October, and for whatever reason, two months has lapsed, and this is only going to be a 22 month um, appointment versus, you know, do we have the right to extend it the extra two months through December? I don't have a problem making the motion on Mike or Mr. Marini or well, Don. I, I guess all I'm on the flip side of that was that the previous term then was a 26 month term. So, um, I, again, I, I would fall back to, um, you know, giving the ability of a new board or a new mayor the option of making a change or, or putting in their person or, or designate. So, I mean, no, I mean, Jared, I think they're done a great job as, as president of, of VEMS, but, um, you know, that's, again, those are the VEMS dates, which I think are different than, than the city's dates. Thank you. Beth um, has her hand. I think Beth, Beth has, her hand up. has her hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to point out. I think these are really only mayoral appointments. I don't think the board of aldermen even has to approve them. I don't recall them ever being done before. I think the mayor can just send a letter of appointment to the BEMS board. But yeah, Beth, Beth is uh, accurate. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they require alderman approval. I think it's really a point of information and to yeah. allow the Board of Aldermen to be part of the, the process. But yes, in the past, it's simply been a um, a letter from the mayor's office. And I believe that's all that VEMS, the agency, requires. Right. So okay. the next, can, I just, can we just skip that then and uh, yeah. the mayor send his we, letter? Can we just accept it as informational? Please. Thanks, Beth. Hey, mayor, thanks for that. <laughs> cool. All right, moving on. Um, so the next one, uh, Board of Library Directors. These are three-year terms. There's two, four, six uh, nominees, and uh, we'll handle these uh, separately. Um, Dennis uh, Proto, Democrat, 107 Thorn Hollow Road, Cheshire, Connecticut, uh, term expiring 12-31-22. Josh, in the past, I think it's worth noting, on the Cultural Commission, there was some discussion on residents living in Sonia, I think it would be good to give a little background on um, why we have uh, someone out of the city sure. uh, potentially being put on a commission. John? Board. Sure. So in this instance, uh, I do believe that um, the section that governs the library board, um, the board of directors to be more accurate, um, does not uh, does not actually fall under the mandate to have its directors be city residents. And this is due to the language that's contained in section 145, which has a general mandate that um, if, it, if the charter doesn't specify otherwise, specifically that appointments to boards and commissions that are done by nomination of the mayor have to be um, uh, residents of the city of Ansonia. Okay, and that's by stringing together section 145 and also, I, I believe, section nine that, that deals with mayoral um, nominations. Um, and not to be too technical, but the library director, uh, the, the, the section that deals with library directors has language that indicates that the mayor appoints rather than nominates. That being said, in the past, we have waived the requirement to put residents on city boards where it was in the best interest of the city of Ansonia. For example, the Economic Development Commission, a prior board of aldermen found that it served the city's interest to have several members be business owners who were playing a vital role in economic development, uh, had something to offer the board, but who were actually residents of uh, other valley towns. Uh, for example, Seccombs was one specific example. Uh, Mr. Greg Seccomb was allowed to serve on the EDC, despite the fact that he was a Seymour resident. And that past practice has also been applied uh, to the Cultural Commission. And we know Mr. Uh, Rich DiCarlo has done a lot 
for events and uh, event planning in the city of Ansonia. He is on the Cultural Commission and the Cultural Commission otherwise would fall under that mandate of having only city residents sit on the board. But the provisions of Section 145 were waived. So I'd recommend but just to be consistent with what we've done and to be on the, uh, the more conservative side, that this Board of Aldermen explicitly on the record make a motion to waive the requirements of the charter um, with respect to um, uh, board and commission members being residents of the city of Ansonia. Although I will add that there is some language that, that does make this a little bit of a special uh, exception. I think it's in the gray area as to whether it's required in the first place. But I'd recommend waiving the requirements of section 145 just to be on the conservative side and, and just to stay with the practice that we've used in the past. And in this case, the mayor's office is proposing two individuals who are employees of the Board of Education to be on this board. And the thought is that this serves the city and the library by helping to foster a connection between the public library and uh, not only the Board of Ed, but the Board of Ed's libraries. And this connection is important because the library, of course, one of its uh, core functions is to serve the youth of Ansonia. And of course, students in Ansonia of Ansonia Public Schools are likely to, to get a major benefit from expanded use of the library services. Uh, and that, of course, goes through all ages, um, from young children to our high school students. We really want to foster, build that, that relationship. We believe having two Board of Ed employees on the board um, could really only help that effort. I agree. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation. And with that, I would like to make a kind of a compound nomination here, or a compound motion to um, stealing your verbiage, waive uh, section 145 for the residency status and accept the nomination of Dennis Proto to the Board of Library Directors. Do we have a motion to, to waive and to appoint Dennis Proto Democrat uh, to, uh, to the Board Gosh, of Library Can you mute, can you you mute, mute 6234? Six, yes. Second. Second by Cassetti. Um, any further discussion on this? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm gonna abstain. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a uh, conflict of interest for myself. My wife actually <laughs> works at the library, so I'm gonna abstain. I'll abstain from all these. Um, is Beth's hand still up from before or is that a new hand? Yeah, no, that's up from before. That's okay. an old hand. All right, so second nominee uh, or... Uh, <laughs> Second person is uh, Jen Bosks, Republican of 99 Jewett Street in Ansonia, term expiring 1231-24. I make that motion. Motion second. by Rivers, second by Mamone. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And all abstain. Uh, motion passes. All right, third person, Lisa Buendia, Republican of 48 Ben Street, Ansonia, oh, no, no, no. term expiring 12 to 31 24. Josh, I'll make that motion in, in light of the conversations that we've had with her and her uh, interest in the library program. So I'll, I'm, I'm kind of honored to make that motion for her. Second. All right, motion by Mamone, second by Tar. And although I enjoyed talking with her, I also abstain on that. <laughs> um, Next one, Shelly Sheridan, Independent, 49 Elm Street, Ansonia, Connecticut, term expiring 1231-24. Motion to accept. Motion by Cassetti. Second. Second. Second by Rivers. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And one abstention myself. Uh, and the last one is John LaRovera, 21 Deer Run Drive, Seymour, Connecticut, uh, term ending, I can't even read it, um, 1231-24. Uh, Can I ask a question? This is also the second employee for the Board of Education, Mr. Marini? Yes. Okay. Comp I'll make a compound motion on this one to waive Section 145, as we have said before, and make a motion to accept John LaRova. LaRova? Whatever his name is. I'm, I apologize. Yeah, his, uh, th this gentleman to uh, the uh, Board of Library Directors. Second. Motion by um, 
Mamone, and I think second by um, Joe. not Joe Cassetti. No, no, that was uh, not. I think not. I think her. Second by not. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And one abstention. Me. <clears throat> All right, thank you. All right, moving on, we have two uh, Board of Police Commissioners. These are two-year terms. Uh, first nominee, these are both from Ansonia, so uh, moving on. Um, Robert Goldson, 29 Glen Drive, Ansonia, Connecticut, term expiring 12-31-23. I make that motion. Motion by Rivers. Second. Second by Mamone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. All right. Second one, Anthony Levinsky, three Hoinsky Way, um, term expiring 12 31 23. I'll make a motion to accept the nomination of Mr. Levinsky to the Board of Police Commissioners. Second. Motion by Mamone, second by Rivers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. All right. Motion carries. Uh, next one is the Board of Public Works, two-year terms. There are two um, nominees, both reappointments. Um, Daniel King, uh, 70 Woodlawn Ave, apartment 16, term expiring 12-31-23. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion by Rivers, second by Mamone. Uh, any discussion about nixing Dan on this one? <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. King, King. Yeah, and one abstention, King. King uh, yeah. Congrats. Second is up, uh, and thank you. Paul, oh God, I'm never going to get this right. Paul Joswishin, 52 Bassett Street, term expiring 12 31 23. Make the motion. Motion by Tar. Second by Cassetti. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries unanimously. Thank you and congrats. Uh, next category, Commission for Elderly Services. These are three year terms. First, um, Diane Stroman, 66 High Street, um, term expiring 12-31-24. Um, I, I, will, I will make that motion for Diane. Uh, honored to do that too. I'd be honored to second that. All right. Mo honorable motion by Rivers with an <laughs> honorable second by Mamone. <laughs> All honorably in, in, in favor. Yeah, aye. 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 Any uh -huh. abstentions? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Second one <laughs> is Priscilla Balaban of 140 Pulaski Highway, term expiring 12 31 24. Make that motion to accept. Motion by nomination. Mamone, second by Cassetti. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. And last one, Joan Lawler, 45 North Westwood Road, term expiring 12-31-24. Motion. Motion by Cassetti, second by? Second. Second by Tar. all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries unanimously congrats to all three moving on uh corporation council um john p. john p marini nine dempsey court term expiring 12 31 23 like chicago i'd be honored to make that motion to accept mr marini as corporation council for another year all right. uh, motion Please. by Malone, second by Cassetti. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, congratulations. Uh, we're gonna skip, uh, the fire commissioners are listed on here. Those are actually, um, that's my duty to um, do that. Those will appear on the committee list um, that will be coming out this month or very beginning of January, although the candidates will be the same. Um, those are my choices as well. Uh, so move on to the historical commission, two-year terms. There are three, um, three members uh, listed. First, Thomas Clifford the third, one or sorry, 10 South Westwood oh. Road, term expiring 11 30 23. I'd like to make that motion for approval. 
Motion by um, Alderman Adamowski, second by Cassetti. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries. Uh, Michelle Libby, 256 North State Street, term expiring 1231-23. Motion. Motion. Motion by second. Cassetti. Second by Adamowski. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? All right. Unanimous. And the last one, uh, Bartholomew Flaherty, 28 Pinecrest Ave, term expiring 1130-23. Motion. Motion by Cassetti. Second. Second by Star. Can, can I ask a question on this? Yep, go ahead. The expiration date on this term, is this different? Is this a, a replacement for, well, no, this uh, is a reappointment. This wasn't replacing someone who resigned. So no. why is the uh, term different? Well, the first and the third are, are both 11-30-23, and the second one was 12-31. Oh, all right. Fair point. So it's just when, when the terms ended up ending the last time. So perhaps okay. two people who left early, um, yeah. or that was when they were done prior. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, any other comments on this? All right. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstaining? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Congrats to all three. Next up, we have Inland Wetlands Commission two-year terms. Uh, there are two people. First, Edward Jones, 21 Kathy Lane, term expiring 12-31-23. Motion to accept. Motion by Malone, second by Janetti. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstaining? All right. Motion carries and Jeffrey Gould, 10 Hull Street. Motion or uh, sorry, term expiring 12 31 23. I make a motion. To motion accept. by Janetti, second, second by Mamone. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstaining? All right. Congrats to both of them. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. We have one, a, a five year term. Uh, Jared Heon, uh, current chairman, 10 Keeley Lane. Term expiring 12-31-26. Motion, I'll make. Motion by Tar, second by Cassetti. Just a note. All of, oh, yeah, go ahead. I just want to say he does a, a fine job on sometimes Fantastic. those meetings do get a little uh, a, a little out of hand. He does a, a great job at, uh, you know, keeping things, uh, you know, contained. So cheers Absolutely. to him. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that. It's been a tough year and uh, – <laughs> He's done a really good job. Congrats and thanks to him. Uh, a lot of heavy lifting this year. Uh, all all right. favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Congrats. Thank you. I don't even know what I'll be doing in five years, but <laughs> we're locked in on the planning and zoning level here. I do. Uh, next up, retirement board. We have uh, two, four six uh members um all two-year terms uh and actually let's see all of them are expiring 12 31 23 so i'll skip the dates on these first up dan king josh uh, is it is it possible to take these together yeah uh, okay. just uh, read all the names off yeah well is there any uh other than against Janetti? uh is there any one that <laughs> you want to vote against <laughs> All right. Is there is there anyone that's going to vote against any of these or abstain or are we going to be going unanimous on all of them? Okay, I will read I'm them all. I got abstain. I got abstain because my name is on there. Yeah, Dan really? as well. And Dan as well. Okay, so with one abstention on King and one abstention on Janetti, the rest will be. By unanimous. the way, these are required. I think. What's that? This board, this board requires certain people to be on there. Any two kind of board of board of no, the clerk's office. So, I mean, yeah, these are nominations, but so many on oh. these boards has to be on it. Yeah, okay, let's just get okay. through it. You, you have, have to be sure. sworn. You have to be sworn in too, correct? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. And I'm, I'm gonna when I read the name, I'll read the affiliation that's with it as well. Uh, so, uh, Dan K Daniel King, Republican, Board of Aldermen, 70 Woodlawn Ave. Apartment 16, Elizabeth Lynch, Democrat, 63 Franklin Street, Judith Larkin, 
Nicolari, Republican, 167 uh, Pulaski Highway, Gary Cassetti, Democrat, Public Works, 102 Route Ave, David Papson, Republican, uh, Boat, 16 Chester Street, and Joseph Gennetti, uh, Democrat Board of Aldermen, 2 Gracie Lane. So um, we will log in a abstention for Dan on Dan King and Joe on Joe Gennetti. All in favor of all the rest of them as a group? Uh, uh, I, can you add in the, the term expires 1231-23? You'd left that piece out. Sorry. Yes, all, all expiring 1231-23. So do we, do we have a, a nominator for all these? I will make that um, motion to it. I beat you. second. You got to okay, finish quicker than that. Yeah, nominee for a nomination by Mamone, second by Tar. All mm -hmm. in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, abstentions? We have those logged. Any opposed? All right, perfect. Done. Congratulations, guys. Congrats. All right, that was long. All right, nap time, and then we'll come back for the rest. Let's see here. I just got to get caught up here on the papers. All right. Where are we at? New business. Nothing under ordinance. Nothing ordinance, yeah. Um, the P and Z piece. I'm gonna find my papers here. I, threw, I started throwing papers around because I got so excited and I, <laughs> I, I threw away stuff that I actually needed. I'm just trying to find it again. Didn't Look flip out. It. Yeah. That's all trash. Let's see here. Where are we at? Appointments? Nothing in order ordinance. New business. Okay, so we have two items. Uh, consideration. Uh, number one, consideration and acceptance of bid RE building digit, digitization of records, Sheila O'Malley. Can you speak to this? Yes, I can. Um, so we went out for three quotes. Um, we contacted one of the vendors. Uh, they said they would submit. They were supposed to meet with building. They never did. That was CME Imaging Solutions. So we don't have a quote from them. We had a quote, here, Sean. We had a quote from Kennedy Employment Services for $19,000. And we had um, a quote from Tangible Analytics Consulting for $16,000. So I'm rec recommending um, or requesting approval for the low bid, which is $16,000. That's to digitalize the scanning of all the building files. So they will be um, you know, easily available and move it right into the 21st century. I make that motion. Motion by Second. River, second by Tar. Any other questions on this or? or um... Quick point of discussion on the finances. Um, is Kurt still on? Yeah. Um, I'm here. Kurt, Kurt is okay, this- um, Did I miss did, Christmas? No, no, not at all. <laughs> all right, is is this sure. but- I'm making sure. Did is, I land the plane safely? Is, is this budgeted? Um, what's the, uh, and where is this being paid from? Uh, it's out of the capital. So oh, okay. we, uh, this is one of the listed capital projects. Got it. Thank you very much. Welcome. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. All right, motion carries unanimously. Yella also up on number two a consideration and potential approval of senior center contract award to diversity construction group LLC. This was in your packet, um, about 15 pages. Um, So do you want to add anything to that before we um, move on or? We, um, we did get three bids for this, uh, for our senior center project. The low bid was Olympus at 906,000. Um, we asked them to level their pricing. Uh, they ended up reneging on that, which would have cost us probably in the, in the range of 970,000. Um, the next lowest bidder is diversity. That's the contract you have before you, before you for 924,000. And then we did have one from BRD in Hartford for 980,000. I am requesting approval um, of the contract with diversity for 924,000 for the senior center. I'll make that motion. 
Motion by Rivers. Second. Second, Second by Tar. Morning, morning Any discussion. Other discussion. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm just that that guy tonight. Sheila, do we have any um, any provision for an owner's rep in here at, at all? Uh, there is a provision for an owner's rep. You have 1.2 million. Within that amount is the contractor's number, the owner's rep, the architect, and furniture. Are we using the uh, the same firm we used before? We are. Awesome. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Any other questions? Or concerns? All right. Um, motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Motion passes. Congrats and thank you. <clears throat> Can't wait. Thank you. Moving on up. And a few of us are newly minted seniors by the, the new rules, so we're very excited. <laughs> would be me. <laughs> Diane, you better haze them well. Yeah. <laughs> You'll regret Lowering it to 50. We'll do. We'll do. Get him. Get him. <laughs> Thank you. Get him, Diane. All right. Now, moving on uh, under old business, we have um, two items. The first one is um, the issue of Kimberly Lane. Uh, Kimberly Lane number two, consideration of the Planning and Zoning Commission's 824 referral. So we did receive um, a letter from Planning and Zoning. Yep. Uh, after they, they met, you recall this has gone this has gone on for a couple months, um, several months actually. Um, and in November, end of November, planning and zoning, the commission members made a motion for a favorable referral for Kimberly Lane to be accepted as a city road, so as to clarify the legal obligations for maintenance of the roadway and to ensure a safe and functional path of travel for its residents and emergency vehicles. Motion. Um, it was uh, unanimously voted through by planning and zoning. There was a note by the chairman, um, Chairman Heon, um, who said, my only caution on it would be the naming as an emergency responder, a street that is split in two that does not connect is very confusing. I would hope the Board of Aldermen can maybe call it extension or something like that in order to split the difference and make sure that folks aren't going up to the hilltop when there's an emergency down on, off of Myrtle Ave. Uh, if you recall, this is the this is the um, properties up the hill. Um, you go up Myrtle Ave, and then you hit a sign for Kimberly Lane. You go up the hill, steep hill, and then there's a few houses, and then there's woods, and it doesn't connect to the other side by drive to Kimberly Lane, which is up by Ben's in the uh, Seventh Ward. So that's why that comment is made there. So, what's your pleasure on this? Hey, uh, Josh, can, I add, can I add to that, please? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I would like to echo uh, Jared's um, what he said about that. I drove the fire truck up there a few times, and it is a very valid point that uh, we do make it extension, like he said. So just to let um, you know, it is confusing, and in an emergency, it could make a difference. Well, I would I would actually say that I think it should be renamed. Um, but That's I think fine. I think extension is even more confusing because it doesn't ex it's not yeah. an extension of the other one. So I would think a, a totally new name um, would be preferable um, because Life. they don't connect. Um, we call it Life. Stella Drive for all the work she's put into it. <laughs> sure. Boulevard. Sorry, Stella. Uh, what, what what happens though for, with the post office? Yeah, that's no. no. Wait, yeah, you have to get an approval from them. Let's right. just let's just deal with the referral yeah, right now. All right, yeah, exactly. we we can we can we should take that under advisement or maybe make that as a as a. Uh, so, what, what's your pleasure? What do you guys want to do with this? I motion to accept the referral from the zoning commission. Send it in the mail. Second. I second it. Motion by. Um, Cassetti, who was the seconder on that? Me, Janetti. Janetti, any further discussion on this? All right, so do we want to put a caveat in there, um, accepting yeah. it and further, yes. we'll further discuss uh, the naming and, and that confusion? I, I know that for the fire department and any of the emergency responders, they have a hard Why enough not time. Why not just continue with this Myrtle Lab? Maybe Myrtle Lab. It's extended. continuation of Myrtle Lab. Why not just remember the houses? That sounds like a good idea. We'll just call it Myrtle F. 
Right. That, seems, that seems like a, a, a good idea, given that I was up there this summer and yeah, fine, yeah. the property up in there was sold as, I think, 105 Myrtle Ave. And right. It's, it's still listed as that, the empty lot before it. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that could be an easy solution there. Um, but we won't walk, we'll take that, change but the land We just have to too. check with the post office and see how that's going to affect yeah. the yeah. residents yeah. there. And, their um, utility utilities and the utilities land everything have to be changed. Yeah. yeah the numbering yeah, yeah. of the electrical the water yeah it's not that uh, simple there's <laughs> no that water easy. yeah i mean there's, there's no water or gas or anything like that um but i think like someone else had mentioned you know maybe myrtle just makes the most sense because the other property is 150 myrtle um maybe that does make the most sense to just have it be a continuation of myrtle you're a resident, correct? Yes. That should settle it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as, as uh, Alderman Cassetti said, let's focus on the thing at hand. We have this yeah. uh, referral where, where the motion was to accept the, this is a city road. Um, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, congratulations. Um, that is uh, that is complete. We will not see Stella ever again. <laughs> Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thank you for your work on this, Stella. Thank you. I appreciate. You know, I it took a while to get connected with the right people, so I appreciate that we finally got it on the agenda. And and yeah, thanks for thanks for uh, yeah, thanks for the help and dealing with me and all my crazy emails. <laughs> don't don't talk down about yourself. You did good. Well, well, you know, I appreciate it, but you know, your constituents can get a little crazy if you might not be aware. You know, sometimes yeah. it just. <laughs> no, we're good. Thank All right. you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Thank moving you. on. Second item under old business is um. 824 referral regarding 22 Silver Hill Road. This is the one that was added on at the end of, or the beginning of the meeting. Uh, I make a motion that we discuss this in executive session. Oh, please. Oh. Why? No, let's just table it. Oh, then let's table it. For what reason? Why? Could you, could I think you it requires some more. We've already ruled on this. We've already made. A decision on this twice i think if we're going to reverse a decision or consider reversing it we need to have another conversation on it that was my only thought so there's a motion to table by who tar or cassetti cassetti is there a second on that wait hold on hold on didn't bobby make the motion to uh discuss it in executive first yes oh. all right so motion so hey, we have just, two. just uh, Josh, uh, yes, Jess, I, I don't think, again, John can clarify this. I don't think this qualifies under the Open, Open Meetings Act for executive session discussion. But right. John, can you confirm There's, that? Th th this is not um, this is not a conversation that would qualify from for to, for any exemption from public meeting laws under FOI. So, you know, no, we would not be able to have a conversation about this topic under executive session for the purpose of, as I understand it, you know, just, just discussing the merits of it. Uh, there's nothing that would indicate that that would be a privileged conversation. Well, nobody hey, seconded it anyways. We've, we've already decided against this. Right, as a, as we've already voted against this. We're not discussing this. That's what I'm saying. Why are we discussing this? Um, because we received in the uh, we received in our packet a letter from one of the residents asking us to um, to consider this. That included a petition. I do will note that we did receive a negative 824 referral from right. planning and zoning in August right. August 30th, 2021. 824 Silver Hill easement. After an hour of discussion uh, for an easement, a motion was made for an unfavorable referral to the Board of Aldermen for the 824. All were in favor. So, um, right. So, uh, what do you want to do? Can I ask a question? So, I'm not sure. I think it was Mr. Dunn that had 
in public session had mentioned something around, you know, public safety improvement. And I know this is just for, I believe, uh, you know, one residence like parking spot or something like that. You know, it sounds like there's some bigger issue on, you know, it sounds like dead man's curve over there. So is there an appetite to, you know, do some sort of study or something on how to improve the overall safety of that street, not just for, you know, a single parking spot, let's just say. That street has a lot of ledge on it, that street. And it's, and it's, it's bad. If you're going to give somebody something in, with that street, just give them as little as possible. You don't want to be, we don't want to be responsible for any bigger area than I already discussing. But, not, that, but we get I'm, that I'm we get we have a million all. streets in the city that have the same issues where there's not enough room for two cars to come through. We've already made a decision on this one. I don't know why it's back okay. before us. Okay. I'm, Sounds I'm just, like they haven't made the decision to me. We did. We voted on this two months ago, I believe. Right. I thought it got tabled. Seems no, I thought we had a vote. No. I think you wanted it to go back to P and Z and then no, I think we oh he kicked it back to P and Z for the 824 and the right. 824 was negative. We can we can do whatever we can rule however we want. We can we can go against the, the P and Z or we can accept the P and Z ruling. No, Either one. Bobby, do you do you have an additional motion here now? I mean, I, I think we take no action at this point. I don't I'm not yeah, but this is gonna Keep coming it's going to kick around. I understand that. So that's why right. I wanted to have another discussion. We were presented with some information that we found to be unclear or or different than what came back the second time when it came before us. And I remember as a group, we decided no. And then since then, we've gotten the unfavorable 824. And now we've gotten from... the 824, which is also unfavorable. So, so let's vote on it then. What's the motion? I withdraw my motion and I reaffirm a motion to vote on it. So is there a motion on this by by one of the aldermen? Yes, I, I, I would motion that we approve the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission to deny the a request. I second I it. Second. Motion by Adamowski, second by Cassetti. Any other discussion on this? This is, is a big, you know, this has been going on a long time, so I want to make sure anyone that wants to speak on this. Any other feedback? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. All opposed? No. no. Anyone opposed? Uh, Stowe? Any abstentions? All right. Um, so we will accept the um, the ruling of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, that is the let's see that's the end of uh, regular. Uh, all we have left are three items under executive session. Do we have a motion to go into executive session? Motion to go into executive session. Second. Motion by Cassetti. Second by uh, Tar. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion to come out of executive session. Is everybody Second. back? I don't think everyone's back yet. Hang on. Um, Dan is not back, and Frank. Frank is not back. And Charlie. Neither, oh, and neither Charlie just got back. Charlie's <laughs> back. Let's just wait a minute. Make sure we get it. We have everybody. Those are the guys on the phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. That might be a little bit more challenging. Nope. Charlie's back on video. We got Charlie. Steve. Hello. Dan is back. Okay. We got everybody. All right. Hit it. Okay. Bob Nuts, Hit it, not Cassetti. back. Not is not back. Most yeah. no, Nuts not back. We're missing not. All right. Let's let's give him a minute here. Want me to call him? <clears throat> um, um, John, can you go get him or close the breakout room? Room's closed. Um, I think he hit leave room by accident. Yeah. Room. Yeah. He should be. Um. Unless he can't um, meeting by Sheila, accident. can you get him on the line? So yeah, let me see if I can get him. All right. Yeah, if you hit leave room and then hit leave room again, you're, or leave, you're going to be out of the meeting. Oh, he's here. He's here. There he is. There he is. Him and Frank. 
They just got here. Oh, oh he, hit it. Hey. Yo, he back. Was uh, in. Bob, not back. All right, so everyone's back. All right, Cassetti, hit it. Motion to come out of executive session, please. Second. Second, Second by Janetti. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, we have three items in executive session. On the item of 25 Pershing Drive, uh, Blight Lean, what's your um, pleasure? Motion to take no action. Second. Motion to take no action by Mamone, second by Rivers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Um, second item was potential lease of Opera House. Motion to accept the lease as discussed in executive session. Second. Motion to accept lease as discussed uh, in executive session by Alderman Ramon, second by Adamowski. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, opposed. Aye. Opposed, Cassetti. Who else? Tar. Tar. Cassetti and Tar. Any abstentions? Yep. One abstention, Aye. not. Motion passes. Um, and the final item, uh, executive level contract negotiations. Motion we to accept. We had two of them, didn't we? Bobby? No. Didn't only. we have two different things? Uh, See, the, the third one is the final one that we talked about, Bobby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Motion yeah. to empower Kurt to negotiate the position of the CAO of the mayor's office and finalize the contract of the mayor's office. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Tar, second by Rivers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Uh, last item. Hold on, I got something to say. Oh, okay. okay. I, I got, I got, I just want to wish my other alderman, Joe Cassetti, a happy oh, birthday happy today. Birthday. Oh, yeah, happy <laughs> birthday. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget Woo! him. Oh, what took so long? Happy birthday, Mr. Cassetti. Uh, yeah, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Thank you. No, I owe you pancakes. <laughs> okay. At the IHOP. <laughs> yeah, that we're supposed to be getting. That Sheila's getting us our own booth. Quiet. Woo! Leaving now. Now I'll make Bye. a motion to adjourn. That motion is. to adjourn by Janetti. Janetti, second. B. I will. Anyone. I will. All Thank right. You. Hey, Merry Christmas. Happy New Merry Year. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy, Hanukkah. Happy, happy everything. Yeah, happy yeah, holidays. Happy everything. Everything. Good night. 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 Good night.